how can we understand thinking in dementia? In this video, we'll try and understand it based on the work of Daniel Kahneman and his notion of fast and slow thinking. Using these ideas, we'll explain why people with dementia may struggle to carry out certain activities, become lost or confused, or carry out behaviours from their young years, like wanting to pick the kids up from school. And we'll offer some recommendations for supporting people living with dementia. So what is fast and slow thinking? Fast thinking can be thought of as being on autopilot. It's the automatic and often unconscious processing we do in response to the world around us. Fast thinking allows us to make quick and intuitive decisions and carry out routine activities like riding a bike, knitting or driving a car pretty automatically. Fast thinking doesn't use up too much thinking power or energy, so we like to do this sort of thinking whenever possible. Slow thinking, on the other hand, is effortful and analytical. It's the conscious thinking we do when we're problem solving, setting plans and goals, or making complex judgments. Slow thinking is hard work and uses lots of energy, so we try to use this type of thinking less often. We use fast and slow thinking in unison. We use fast thinking to do complex activities with ease, and slow thinking to plan and check in with what we're doing. For example, mindlessly knitting and following a pattern, or driving a car and following a route. So what happens to fast and slow thinking in dementia? Dementia is characterised by a loss of brain cells. As these cells start to die, the brain is less able to carry out difficult tasks, which affects a person's ability to do slow thinking. Slow thinking becomes less available and less reliable, and people with dementia appear to rely a lot more heavily on the automatic and intuitive processing of fast thinking. Now let's have a look at how these changes in thinking might affect how a person living with dementia behaves. Let's follow Mary as she leaves the house to buy a loaf of bread. Mary leaves the house with the intention to buy some bread. She should have turned right to go to the shops, but instead she turned left by mistake. Due to Mary's memory difficulties, she forgets all about the bread. Along the road is a park which Mary enjoys spending time in, so she goes into the park. She walks through the park and finds herself at her adult son's old primary school. The school is closed and Mary is time shifted to a time when her son was little. So she sets about trying to find him. Mary arrives at her old house, which now belongs to a man called Aidan. Mary gets angry at Aidan and accuses him of taking her son and shouts for someone to call the police. So let's consider this journey again in terms of fast and slow thinking. As Mary left the house, she had a plan to get bread. However, due to her short term memory, she forgot this plan, which meant that she could no longer rely on her slow thinking. Instead, Mary had to rely on her intuition or her fast thinking to know which way to turn. Mary normally turns left as she leaves the house. So this is the way that she goes automatically. Mary enjoys the park and goes there often. So again, it was an automatic and intuitive decision to go into the park, relying on her fast thinking again. The route through the park was also fast thinking. This was a regular route for Mary when she'd take her son to school. Lots of people may experience that when they go somewhere often, like work or school, they start to take that journey without thinking. Sometimes people will even start to take those routes by mistake when they're not paying attention. That's fast thinking and exactly what happened to Mary as she made her way through the park to the school. When Mary got to the school and saw it was closed, she became worried about her son and where he might be and set a goal of trying to find him. For this she was able to use slow thinking to set a goal and make a plan for where to look for him. You might be wondering why Mary was able to remember this goal, but not her goal to get bread. And that's because the goal to find her son is highly emotional, and emotional memories are more easily remembered. As we can see from Mary's journey, she's almost always using fast thinking. She's relying on cues in the environment to know where to go, for example seeing the park, and has very limited use of her slow thinking. So how can we use this information to support people living with dementia? We can use this idea for behaviour that challenges. If someone is displaying behaviour that challenges, such as wanting to pick their children up from school, it can be helpful to consider triggers in the environment which are causing them to shift their slow thinking and goals. Perhaps it's children walking past the window, or seeing a school on the TV, or even a clock displaying the time that they would pick their child up. 
by removing these triggers, we can try and prevent the behaviour. We can also make use of the fact that emotive goals are more easily triggered and remembered. So we can redirect people to a new engaging topic or goal, which they can hold on to for a long time. This is where it's important to know the person really well, so you know what hobbies or topics are meaningful to them, which can excite and engage them. It can also help us to develop the best activities, because we know we need to create ones which rely mostly on intuitive, fast thinking, and not on slow planning and strategy. For example, an in-the-moment activity like aromatherapy. Simple games like snap or dominoes would rely less on slow thinking than games like bridge or chess. If an activity requires long-term planning, such as baking, the carer can guide the person through the steps that require the planning, such as preheating the oven and following the recipe, but other tasks, like mixing, could be done by the individual. In summary, fast thinking is automatic and allows us to make intuitive decisions. Slow thinking is effortful, analytical, and allows us to make long-term plans and goals. In dementia, slow thinking is less available, so fast thinking is relied upon more. We can support people living with dementia by removing triggers for behaviour that challenges, and by engaging them in activities which mostly rely on fast thinking.